countdown's over. Get going. <laughs> So, good morning. I like the, uh, the chair spinning emote. <laughs> Find all the cool emotes, Brainless. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I can quickly turn on and off notifications. This. How am I? I'm doing good. I, um, it was an unfortunate, I skipped, uh, the, the Friday stream, but, uh, just, just, just not, uh, not feeling it, you know, just needed, a <laughs> uh, a lazy evening that day. Yeah. It's unfortunate. I did buy, um, I think it was the week before last. It's been a little, a little while now. I did buy Astronauts, and I was thinking about maybe next Friday playing that. Um, it's very in the the space genre that I like so much. Um, but uh, we can still do a poll, perhaps, if there are other nominations. I think Brainless, you mentioned something about maybe don't starve together. So we could do a, a poll at the start on Friday. Or, um, you know, maybe hmm, it's worth thinking about how, how that could be better. It's kind of awkward, I know, necessarily. <laughs> Catch the very beginning of the stream. Uh, I could try co-op, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's been a long time since I played Don't Starve Together. I think there's been a lot of updates since then. So, I don't know. It could be fun. It could be fun. As for today, though, um, after I, I dragged myself out of bed, got some coffee. <laughs> and then, you know, did the whole Invisalign thing. Uh... I am here. Am I low? Um, let me see. Am I low? Maybe I'm just talking quieter, or I can I can move the mic closer. At least today, is it better or worse? Maybe I'm just quieter today. <laughs> I think my audio settings are, are pretty normal. I can turn the mic up a little bit. Maybe to negative three decibels. Is this better? Better or worse? <laughs> Maybe you're just going deaf. Oh no. I hope not. Well, we'll we'll leave it here for now. And... Uh, we'll we'll go from there. Okay, so yes, what are we doing today? Uh, overall, started a new run of Mind Over Magic, max difficulty. Oh my. <laughs> Well, I hope you, you I hope you survive. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is the boy? What does that email look like? I don't know. I have to come back to Mind Over Magic. I think I mean, we'll have to see what updates come out, but it might be good to just start over on a higher difficulty. Um. So today, though. What I was thinking, so previously we were working on a separate project, this GT AWS tests, working on testing out things with Pulumi and um, getting things into AWS. And so that was mostly working. Waiting on the Dragon update could be an option. Yeah, yeah. I had to keep an eye on that. 
So what I'm thinking today though, is that we take the Plumy stuff and we move it over into uh, the main glowing telegram project. And we start actually building stuff for AWS in glowing te telegram. Um, somehow, somewhere. Think. Ah, <sighs> feeling feeling a little a little slow this morning. <laughs> what what am I thinking? Um. So let me let me look at my my list of things over here. Ah, uh, over on workflowy. So I definitely want to work on. Um, using FFmpeg. So we have, we have a bunch of code already, right? To do stuff with FFmpeg. Like we have this ffprobe.rs. Uh, Just ignore the long comment. <laughs> we got some uh, things to deserialize um, and to run ffprobe and get metadata from a file, right? So we got some code like that. We have some stuff buried in handlers, maybe? No, not in handlers. Maybe in handlers. Uh, stream ingestion, was this it? Oh yeah, stream ingestion is where we're scanning files. This is less relevant um, to what we're gonna be doing with S3. But here's where we're, we're calling uh, ffprobe on, on, a, on a file. Um, and we have transcription to RS where we are shelling out to um, FFmpeg to get audio. And we are calling uh, somewhere, uh, yeah, Whisper. So I think what we're likely going to do is extract out some of this code into a, a separate crate. Um, and then create a separate folder for our, um, our AWS batch script, code, what have you, to do this work. Um, I feel like that is the most important thing to do right now. Like the whole idea here is to change up my workflow so that instead of yeah, let me, let me make this a little bit more con concrete. Let's pull up that and it's broken. There it is. Okay. So today what happens is like I go into, uh, let's, let's clear, clear the filters. So here's the stream from last Monday, right? And I go to video clips. And I scan for clips and this finds all the video files, right? So it's like these manual steps that happen and um, then things have to be queued up, right? So this is like me manually moving things through the workflow and I'm gonna change that around. And I wanna make it so that instead what happens is that I push the files. This is a thing I'm doing anyway, right? So normally what I do after a stream is I will, um, I'll run this uh, this PowerShell command to upload uh, to upload files, and uh, that uploads it to that S3 bucket, and then they're archived there, right? So what I would like to have happen is I would like it to, um, and I think I've explained this before, but I would like it so that the when the files are uploaded, it automatically triggers this this job that uh, does all the stuff I would be doing through the app kind of manually working through the workflow. It just would automatically happen. It would store the resulting artifacts um, in S3 and DynamoDB and you know, in AWS. And then those things would be there for the app to then retrieve and use. Um, and then at some point, I can actually show you the new UI that I've been working on that um, I've been kind of working on off stream. 
as I've been kind of thinking through how it would work. Uh, and we can bring it all together. <laughs> uh, okay, so I think the first, the very first thing, right, is to get the Lumi set up in here. I think what I'm gonna do, Brainless, you suggested we use Python. And I think I'm going to do that. We're gonna mix it up a little bit. And we're gonna do some Python. So, how do we do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I also wanna try, let's see, docs, or maybe tutorials, getting started. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now, effectively, we are on Linux here, but I already have Lumi installed. Right, so if I just open a terminal here. Uh, yeah, we're gonna, it, it is. I remember, uh, I, I'm sure there's lots of people saying it's awful still, but back in the day, so many critiques of the idea of curling something and passing it into, uh, <laughs> into uh, sh uh, sh or bash or what, what have you. But whatever, we're doing it. Okay, 3.132. Now let's talk about Python. Uh, I think we have pip. So for Python 3. Um, yeah, configure. Uh, I already have an AWS profile. And Think about this. I'm gonna do Pulumi, Pulumi new. What if I do Pulumi new dash dash help? Lots of options. There are 227 locally installed templates. <laughs> you can do dash dash AI. Lots of things. All right, if you use Pulumi AI, then you can tell it which language to use. Uh, dash L is the list of templates. Many templates. I don't really want like a specific like, oh, make a static website or anything like that. I just want to kind of um, just a, a blank slate and we're gonna drop stuff in because it, there's gonna be a lot of different things as we go. Um, what I was curious about though, yeah, so there is AWS native and I wanna try doing that. So AWS native for Plumi uses the, um, AWS's Cloud Control API, I think is what it's called, uh, which means that we don't have to wait for Pulumi and Terraform to add support for things. And generally, I think taking Terraform out of the equation is probably a good thing, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, this folder is not empty. Do we, so in GT AWS tests, we had Pulumi set up in the top level directory and we had dependencies and stuff. And the question is like, let's see, when we're doing Docker builds on a location, I think we do something like dot dot slash a location. I think that should be, that should work. Um, what I'm thinking here is like, um, so we make a subfolder where all of the deploy stuff lives, the infrastructure lives. Oh, what are we gonna call it? 
I guess I could just call it infrastructure. Something like that. Project name is Flowing Telegram. I actually was thinking the other day about like um, more descriptive names for this project and I kind of gave up. <laughs> I couldn't arrive at anything I was really satisfied with. So um, yeah, names are hard. name is dev sure um i don't even know what poetry is i guess we'll use pip um let's use us west 2 hooray uh, so maybe this Camera will go off briefly. <laughs> Where is the camera? Oh, there, there it is. It's my least important password, but doesn't mean I want to show it to you. <laughs> All right. So, do we just do we try again or? Okay, so what Pulumi knew with the template gave us, it made a requirements.txt. Yeah. Um, let me make it bigger. There we go. He gave us a Pulumi.yaml. He gave us a Pulumi dev.yaml. Um, probably want something like profile being uh, Telegram admin. And we can do other things, but I don't care. Uh, we gotta get ignore for this folder. Makes sense. Um, I guess I should add Python to the stream tags, huh? <laughs> uh, let's see. Python. Woo. All right. Uh, we got a main.py in infrastructure. So infrastructure is one big Python module, I guess. We got some complaints uh, because we probably didn't actually install things, uh, but we can do that, right? So pip install. What did it actually try to do? It tried to do something kind of different, didn't it? Where did the error message go? Uh, 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 much scrolling. So it tried to do ensure pip. I don't know what that is. What is ensure pip? Very odd. Uh, bn bin. Interesting. Uh, after installing Python 3 bn package, recreate your virtual environment. So rm-rf. Virtual env. I love how the autocomplete gives us like Windows executables too. Um yeah. Ah, that makes sense. What did I just install then? Python 3.10 bn.
Fascinating. So what is Python 310 VM if that? <laughs> install dash r requirements now this this is <laughs> familiar ground okay so we installed things um so i think we should be good right so like if i do pulumi Uh, stack. Uh, yeah, current stack is dev, owner Sabin, current stack resource is zero. That all makes sense. Um, what we want to do is we want to um, import our bucket. I'm going to get rid of all this. We don't want to actually create a bucket. Um, so, here's a question Do I have that? And in my history, import. Yeah. Okay, so Pulumi import AWS S3 bucket, bucket, video archive, save in video. Okay, so we want to import a bucket. Its local name in the stack will be video archive. The actual name of the bucket is save in video archive. Um, that's fun. Okay, so. Pulumi provider's AWS resource default has, oh, right, 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 right. Uh, do I want to perform? No, I don't. So the issue is that we did AWS. I think we need to do AWS native here because in our Pulumi dev, it's the profile is configured for AWS native. I didn't give it a profile for the, the other module that we're not using. So I think, let's see if this works. Okay, to the docs. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. Um, packages. AWS native. It is public preview, but I just, I figured we'd, uh, we'd give it a shot, see if we can make it. So, we should have an S3 package. We should have a bucket. Okay. And how would I go about importing this resource? Why didn't either of the commands work? Resource type AWS native S3 bucket, bucket not found. Maybe an underscore, but this is Python. I don't think that. Maybe it is an underscore instead of a hyphen in this first identifier. Okay. That's a different error. Hooray. Hmm. I uh, could not find the latest version of provider AWS native. Okay, so probably probably it is a hyphen. Given that error. So resource type 
S3 bucket slash bucket not found. Maybe for AWS native, it's like that. Nope. Package module type. Ah. Maybe like that then. Hooray. Okay, and we get some warnings. Can't import write only properties, access control, lifecycle configuration rules, expired object delete me, uh, marker, yada, 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 replication configuration rules. Okay, so the lifecycle stuff, it doesn't seem to be able to import. So it's gonna create the stack and it's gonna import the bucket. Let's, let's go ahead and do that. And if I go back over to, I have a link to my projects, Lumi Cloud. So we have the, the old GT AWS tests, and then we have Glowing Telegram as a, as a thing that has a stack. And if we look at its resources, we have our provider and our stack and our bucket. So I can't import write only properties, huh? Okay, and then it gave us uh, some code, to copy and paste, right? So here is our Python code to define the bucket in our stack. Otherwise, uh, if I did Plumi up, it would say, hey, you need to delete that bucket because it's not defined or, or something like that, I think. I think that's how that works. So, um, okay. So that's interesting, right? So the, the code that it generated for us assumes AWS native exists. Um, and then the code that we got from the, the template just directly imports the S3 um, thingy. So I think import as AWS native is going to at least make it so that the code snippets we get um, will match. Um, let's see. So things that we need to do. Let's see. Python, that's fine. How do we, there should be a way to select the virtual end. Oh, what does this do? Oh, interesting. Creates a dot end. That's not what I want to do though. Um, interesting. Wonder. I'm very rusty with Python. <laughs> uh, over three years since I last used it, we should be able to just source. Yeah. 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 So in. Um, like from the shell, you can use one of the activate things, right? But for, for, um, this, I think what I want to do is I want to maybe do this. There we go. All right. So I just selected the, there we go. That realized now it's a virtual end. Okay, so that makes all the warnings go away. Uh, which is good. Okay, 
And I think, yeah, so we have acceleration status enabled. This, you know, makes it faster to upload, theoretically. Analytics configuration, uh, I guess I had that. Uh, bucket, oh yeah, yeah, I probably had this turned on so that I could monitor like how this, the, the storage uh, of the bucket is increasing over time. Uh, bucket encryption, bucket name, lifecycle rules. Uh, that all looks right. Ownership rules, public access is all blocked. Versioning is enabled. And I think we're, are we missing a line here? Or no, no, that, that closed that. Do we have um, formatter installed? No, let's fix that. Ah, uh -huh. I do have a formatter installed. It's not just not installed in WSL. There we go. Now we have auto formatting. Okay. So great. <laughs> we're part of the way to where we were um, two streams ago, but at least now it's in the project. Um, so what do? Uh, let's see. So if we look at our stack, See that's there. Um, that looks good. I do stack LS, we should just see the one stack, right? Good. Okay. Uh, where to from here? It's always the question. <laughs> uh, okay. So let's let's work on. Let's make a. Um, let's let's do some Rust coding. How about that? A little taste of Python. Let's get back to Rust. We'll work on our um, uh, program that's going to take uh, a local file and do all of these things and get some results. I think that's, hmm. I guess it's going to have to get the, the object from, get in frame, get the object from S3. Actually, I could, I could write this down. Uh, so extract functions for the above into a uh, separate crate, uh, sub crate, I'll call it, right? Still in our project. Um, and then create a uh, CLI tool that it's an object from S3 uh, based on um, uh, let's see based on what based on CLI command uh, uh, parent And object and, and key. There we go. That's all I want to say. Um, does the does the thing, right? Does these things <laughs> stores uh, the, the results in S3 and uh, DynamoDB. Um, so what in S3, so like the audio extraction, because that's going to be like what happened with Python. Well, we're going to still be doing Python. We're still going to be doing Python for our Pulumi uh, infrastructure. We're not doing everything in Python. I, I thought about the statement I made a couple of, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> hey, save money. How's it going? I thought about the statement because you were asking about Python before, and I thought about the statement I made, which is like, well, we're already using TypeScript and Rust. 
why should we add a third language? And then I thought, why not? Uh, so I figured this would be a, a good excuse to like bring in Python too. So we're going to be using TypeScript for the front end. We're going to be using Rust for the back end, and we'll be using Python for the, all the infrastructure code is what I've decided for now. Um, could we use Python for the backend stuff too? Maybe. I do already have some Rust code that does it. Uh, some of the things. Um, and maybe I just don't want to rewrite it. <laughs> Uh, rewrite it right now. Uh, so the results in S3 demo. So audio extraction in and keyframes in S3. Uh, metadata and paths to results are going to go into Dynamo. I think that makes sense. This is the thing I just said right there. Let's look over to that line. So that'll be this this tool, this tool that we're gonna create. And then um, we'll we'll take a break from kind of the media processing stuff after that point to um, work on this other thing that I said I was gonna work on at some point to uh, call some Twitch APIs and uh, work on some automation on that side of things just to mix it up. Okay, so how do we get from here to there? Uh, let's see, so we wanna be here. I'm gonna do cargo new dash dash lib. Uh, what are we gonna call this? We wanna create a new crate that's gonna contain all of our code that deals with, what, FFmpeg? Like, is, is that literally all we're doing is just wrapping FFmpeg, right? To do the audio extraction, grab keyframes, and use FFprobe. So I guess so. Um, I, I might just call it GT uh, FFmpeg. As a member of the workspace, nice, it auto does that. That probably meant it updated Cargo Tomo. Yes. Nice. Cool. All right. And so now we have GTFFmpeg version 010. And we have a lib.rs. We're just going to delete all that. Um, hmm. Okay. So the plan right now. I think so. This file in API SRC called FFprobe um, doesn't know anything about like Axum or any of our web API stuff. So I think we're just going to take this whole thing and move it. Yeah. Pub mod FFprobe. Uh, and then we we are missing some dependencies <laughs> and other things are broken too so let's sort that out uh, so we need Tokyo and Serde and probably Serde JSON too let's grab those and go back to our new crate and add those to here okay what is it unhappy about We don't have tracing. We don't have tracing. Oop, tracing. All right. And then docs for function returning result missing errors section. Docs? What's it mean? <laughs> Uh, 
docs for function returning result missing error section. Imagine that we had docs. shut it up <laughs> wow does this actually lint our uh, our documentation that's 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 something I don't know that I've seen something like that before all right this could be rewritten instead of writing okay uh, let okay output that's fair except if we did that Oh, uh, a wait else. Interesting. Interesting. Why wouldn't we do that? That's pretty cool. Let's okay. Else. Have I seen a let else before? <laughs> huh, interesting. Okay, and um, there, there are more lint things that we could probably look at, right? So, saying, hey, we can use map or else here and here and here. That's fine. Let's leave it. Okay, so, um, and then we're, we're seeing things, lent, lent messages about our other packages. Interesting. Uh, things I should probably deal with. Okay, so we don't, we no longer have an FF probe mod in uh, API. And then our handler stream ingestion needs to be updated to use FF probe from the other crate. Uh, yeah, good. So there should be an error. We just need to use FF Pro, right? Um, no, no, no. GT, GT FFmpeg. Unresolved import GTFFM. Isn't that what I called it? Oh, we probably need to make it a dependency of this crate. Is that, is that right? Seems like it is. All right. All right, so <laughs> there's that. Uh, and then we just have to do the rest of the things for the refactoring here. So um, in transcription, I think this is gonna be interesting because we're gonna wanna extract part of the work. So we want to extract the part where we call FFmpeg and get a WAV output. And yeah, so this should be interesting. This is not going to be as straightforward as the, uh, the other part, right? Because for now, I'm going to leave the whisper stuff here. Uh, we may make a separate wrapper crate for this. So the th what we do here is we have this process that goes into whisper detection. Whisper detection. How are we? Oh yeah, we call 
stdn with audio which is the the output from uh our ffmpeg command wondering if the API I want to build, I'm really going to return an STDIO or if there's something correct output. exactly what I'm looking for. It's kind of so you can convert a file into a STDIO. You can convert IO STD out. Maybe look at it a different way, right? So when we have the STDIO from audio extraction STD out, right? We we have that, and that gets piped in to STDN. So what does STDN take? It takes something that can be converted into an STDIO. So what can be converted into an STDIO? This is the same thing that I was already scanning, right? satisfied with with what I found but we're, we're just gonna keep on moving forward uh, okay so I think what I'll do is I'm going to create a new file here called audio extraction RS okay pub mod audio yep that one and Goal here is going to be we're going to have a function that's going to take a file path uh, the same way FF Probe does. And it's going to need to return a result that has a stream of some kind. Right, so something like this. Let me just start with this. We'll, we'll go from there, right? So this is not probe. This is going to be uh, audio extraction, uh, or I'll just call it extract. There we go. Uh, the result is going to be an STDIO, I guess, and. This need to be a box. I'm gonna leave this here and uh, 
extract extracting audio from path. Yeah. And uh, then I'm not going to rewrite or have copilot rewrite. Uh, I'm just going to take the existing code and we'll, we'll adapt it here. Um, so there's some logic here around converting the URI that the API gets into a file name. We don't need to worry about that. We don't need to worry about converting or getting the absolute path like this is doing. Um, video duration is interesting. Why are we doing that? Uh, oh, I see. That's part of the, the transcription work. So I don't, I don't need to care about that either right now. We really are just doing this bit. Okay, so that gets us something. And then we want to return some kind of error. I could almost believe that will work. Let's save it so we can get some warnings about things that are missing. Uh, let's see, import. I don't know if that is the right type or will be compatible. Is it a different? Yeah, STD process, good. So save that. More, more warnings, more errors, more problems. Uh, so expected ENA, all right. So we're, we're not actually returning anything. Uh, yeah, maybe that. Yeah. So, uh, we should probably say which audio track we want to extract as a, as an argument here. Yeah. Uh, command, we probably want to import Tokyo process command. And suddenly, that kind of sort of almost works. Now, at this point, what we want to do is we want to handle... Interesting. Try into. Okay, so unwrap doesn't, isn't what we want because that will panic. Uh, what we want to do is we want to do uh, uh, if let some STD out. Uh, we want to do STD out. Wow, how's it already been an hour? That's something. Try into. Okay. Uh, no more red squigglies, just yellow ones. Because uh, this doesn't need to be async. Apparently. Let's see what happens if I remove the async. Uh, we can use we can do this. Then we don't have documentation, I think is what it's complaining about now. So let's add some auto generated docs. It really seems to struggle with, uh, there we go. Okay, path, track, returns. Um, Errors. Okay. So when I hover over extract, we see this. That's not exactly what I was hoping for. Why, um, why, why does it do that? It's reading my asterisks here as, uh, as bullet points. So if I if I look at the definition of like STDIO and look at its docs, oh, they do like triple slash. Interesting. So if I do something like that, or I do like oops, space or three space. Something like that. Is that 
Is this the is this this the thing to do? Ah, fancy. Okay. Uh, I guess I should update this one too, huh? All right, maybe we can do this before the ad starts. Oops. Let's control H. All right, and then looking at Pro, we got fancy documentation. All right, so we're gonna take a break here. I'm gonna be back, be back in just a few minutes. I'm gonna go walk around, stretch my legs top off my water and we'll be back for more reorganization and uh making things that we can deploy to aws brb mm -hmm. when this trait is derived it will assume that all fields are going to match matches all the fields in the query 